Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus and in this tutorial we are going to create a dart throwing algorithm inside of Exodini. First of all, I want to thank Anim from the Oddforce forums uh, who helped me with this code. I set up my own, but it was not working and a bit convoluted and this one is way more streamlined. So let's recreate this. First of all, let's set up a geo container and call it dart throwing. Inside we are going to create a mesh. I take the pick head and remove the shader from it. Now the pick head comes with uh, lots of groups. We can see that when we press on I. And I want to get rid of those because we're not using them and it doesn't make sense to carry them around. So group delete with a star removes them all. And also the UV maps are quite uneven. So if you look at the bottom, you can see that this faces down here have very little representation on the UV map. This one should be bigger, so let's just um, use a UV layout to make this more evenly spaced. UV layout has this option for scaling islands to match their surface areas, which is a good idea. All right, now it's um, about time to create a solver. And inside the solver, we want to create a attrib wrangle. Let's hold down or press A and press the left mouse button, move it to the left, uh, to the right to make it a bit tidier. And this wrangle will be used for scattering points. Now, uh, when we go up, we should make sure that um, first we don't need the quick shade any longer, and also we don't want to do any deformations uh, on the mesh itself. So the mesh will be rather a reference. So let's move it to the second input, and we're going to leave the first input free. So because all we want to iterate over are points and newly created points. So this is what our attrib wrangle is doing and we should set it to run over detail so it just happens once per frame. So it works like this. We are going to um, start off really simple by just um, saying we want to add a point at a random location. So let's define a vector called pos for position and create a random vector based on the time. The time is uh, useful here because um, the time is changing every frame inside our solver. So we could just use this vector and create a new point. I call it pt add and use the function add point, which is expecting two things. Um, let's have a look at the documentation for this. So, um, mark add point and press F1 to see it. Add point on the first geometry stream and uh, at a certain position. And this is defined by pause in our case. So let's go up and just hit play and you should see we get random positions between 0 and 1. And we should extend the timeline. So I just set it to 4800 and hit apply. Now, of course, we don't want to just randomly create some points, but we want to uh, do this right on the surface of our pick head. And we want to define those random locations by random locations on the UV map. So we would just place random um, locations here, ask whether they are on the UV islands or off. When they are on, they get translated into um, the 3D space and world space and are placed right on top of our mesh. When they are placed on our mesh, we will then ask whether there are other points nearby and if they are too close or if they are touching their radii, then those points are not going to be created. So for the longest time, we are just going to work with locations and only in the end we are going to use the actual function add point. So before this, 
filtering steps take place and also uh, lots of yeah, kind of translations. So I'm going, going to rename the position to position UVW and first of all I want to ask whether uh, where, where are those um, points on our UV map. So for this we have a function called UVPrim excuse me UVDist is for asking uh, the distance uh, of a UV coordinate to a geometry in UV space. That's important. It's not measuring a distance from a map to a world coordinate, but rather inside the UV space. So we do this on uh, the second input because this is where our reference mesh is going to be. The UV map name is just UV and it's going to look up the UV coordinates it's saying in here I think and then we are it's asking for a vector and this is our own custom location called POS UVW and what we will get in return is not just the distance as a float value but also a primitive so we can just type prim um, ID which is basically the primitive number and also the prim st which is the coordinate on that primitive. In order to make this work we should define a, a variable called float dist underscore uv and um, also we should define an integer for the primitive ID that is um, being returned from uv dist and also a vector location called prim st. So now of course adding this point doesn't work so let's I just comment it out for the time being and um, now the first thing we do is the check whether those um, reference geometry from the second input has been hit or not and we have a distance and if this distance is zero then our points are right on those islands and if there is a distance this means it's outside somewhere away from those islands so we can just ask if the dist uv is um, smaller than a really small number I take 0 e minus 5 which is 0 0.0001 and if it is bigger than that, we can actually create a point. I just take this over here. Of course, we cannot create the point right away, but we would like to know how a location from our UV map translates to 3D space. And we can use prim UV for that. Prim UV is um, taking in all the information we got out of UV dist. So we again work on the second geometry stream and the attribute name is um, basically the position we want to get back on the primitive ID and the primitive coordinates ST. So this would be our vector position. So I call this pause PT because this is the position of the point. All right, PT add. Add point should refer to the position PT. And now we can do our first little test whether this works. But because Houdini likes to crash, especially when using solvers, we should just save down this and uh, choose our folder <clears throat> where Houdini files belong. So I just call this, um, yeah, basically dot throwing. Just to make sure. Let's go up and jump back. And this is our geometry and this is where it should scatter to. And when I hit on the solver, oh yeah, and the mistake is um, simply 
that we defined the vectors, vector locations, position uvw in three dimensions, but we should flatten this to 2D. So we multiply the first components by one and the last one um, by zero. So now it should be able, uh, this should basically work together. So we have two dimensional UV coordinates that can be used within UV dist. And it's 1e minus 5 to get that small number. And we're good to go. Now, of course, all these points are randomly placed um, on, on the mesh, which is um, a cool effect for starters. Uh, it's a bit like a scatter sop um, in a solver, but at the same time, we want to keep a certain distance from the other points so our spheres do not intersect. And for this, we are going to use PC find function. And it even comes in a PC find radius. It's supposed to work on our geometry screen because it's working on the points we are creating. And the, the position channel we are going to use is P. And the radius, uh, we still have to define that attribute is called P scale, so the point scale. And we don't want to scale on, on this, so we can just... Uh, set it to 1.0 so it, it's not being scaled and then we want to uh, get our own uh, position here so pause pt and also define a random radius so we should do that float radius pt is just another random value um, but this time not just based on time, but also some random value. So it's uh, by no means uh, similar to the um, position we defined up there. And also this radius shouldn't be ranging from 0 to 1, but rather from uh, custom like 0 0.04 up to 0 0.2 maybe. So it's not too big. And we're going to use this random radius uh, as the yeah the radius in here and now we would just look for the nearest point in this point cloud so just one and because this is returning a list we will just set it to integer and call this pts and use um, those brackets to actually have um, a list of containing just this one point that may or may not have been found within this radius. So this function is a little more complicated. It's not just uh, finding the closest point, but it's also taking its own radius into consideration. So if there is a point with a bigger scale around it, it's just uh, it will find this one first. Good, now we can just say if the length of this array called PTS is not 1, so if you haven't found any nearby point, it's safe to create one by yourself. And in order to make this loop work, we also have to define a radius for each point so we would just set a point attribute and this point attribute function wants to know the current geometry stream the name which is p scale so this works together nicely and um, is also what the copy sop will be expecting later to copy spheres on our points then we have uh, the point number. In this case, it's rather a point name, so pt add, it's our own point, and a value which will be the radius pt, so rad pt, and also we should set this value. 
Now let's see how this turns out when we go up and uh, hit play. Then now all those points are not so randomly created anymore. You see they keep a certain distance from each other and there are even some frames where no point can be created because at this location it has been filtered out. Of course you can define the density with the values we have in here. It's ranging from 004 to 0 0.2 at the moment. You can play around with this. But first of all we want to just put spheres on our um, points so we can make sure there are no intersections. So let's copy to points. And we don't need to show guide geometry and it looks quite good so far but admittedly they are quite large those spheres so let's jump back and see how this is working and maybe to just see everything a little better we can also um, colorize those spheres with another little vex script in an attribute wrangle so this would be a vector at cd and i would like to have really colorful spheres so I define a float called hue first and use another random value based on the point number and here in the color vector I use HSV to RGB which is converting a set vector to RGB and I'm going to use the hue quite a bit of saturation 0.9 and the full brightness 0 0.0 excuse me 1.0 and this would be our colors maybe like so and now we are good to go and can just hit play and basically enjoy the show Oh, and by the way, if you want to have more um, points created per frame, you just set the sub steps to maybe something like 10, and that way it should scatter a little faster. And also, if you want to improve the code a little, you can just say if the length of PTS equals zero, this is a bit more precise. <laughs> 